Hello, my name is Joe Hedrick of Imagine It Technologies, and today we're going to take a look at some advanced field collection techniques inside of Civil 3D. Now that we're back in Civil 3D, let's take a look at some of these advanced coding techniques that I'm talking about. I've got three different scenarios for us to discuss. First of all, you'll notice that kind of along the southeast uh, corner of this project, we have a road uh, that the surveyors, while they were collecting out in the field, they did their best to shoot the center line of this road. And then there's actually a secondary road that uh, at this intersection that leads into a parking lot. And they collected the center line of that road as well. What's uh, kind of unique about this and what's, uh, again, relatively new, uh, most of this you know, functionality came with the 2010 version of Civil 3D. It's been enhanced upon uh, uh, here and there uh, in subsequent versions. But kind of the new idea here is the ability to collect one point and assign multiple codes to it. So in this case, I've got one point, and this is point 5182 that's acting as the center line of road one, and it's also the center line of road two that's ending. So just like this, we were able to collect one point. Civil 3D is smart enough that it can connect the line work uh, you know, from two different figures terminating in the one. This really eliminates us having to you know, double, or, you know, take double shots like we used to do way, way in the past. Uh, the next uh, scenario that I'd like to take a look at is curve collection. And this is probably where some of the biggest enhancements really to Civil 3D's collection uh, have been made. Right? If you recall, you know, with LAN Desktop, with uh, some of the previous versions of Civil 3D, we had a command for codes called C3. And we had to shoot curves in groups and clusters of three-point shots. And if we had a curve that you know, either reversed on itself or was longer than what we could collect in three points, then we used to have to you know, collect that third point, move over maybe an inch or so, and start a new grouping of three. Well, as you can see from this reverse curve, all of, that, all of that's really gone. Uh, you know, and now what we do is right at the PC, we, uh, we denote that point as PC. At the very end of it, we can denote that point as PT. And what Civil 3D is going to do is all the points that fall in between, it's simply going to fit an arc, uh, you know, through those particular points. Now, something else that you'll notice uh, if you've got a keen eye is I collected, you know, top of, you know, kind of the, the back of the curb, and then the edge of the asphalt or the flow line. And it would be back of curb, flow line, back of curb, flow line. You know, again, historically, what we used to have to do is when we started to collect a curve, we had to finish that curve before we could jump off and pick up a different feature type. And with this, you know, again, no longer that way. I can jump around. Uh, here's the, uh, the edge of the asphalt or the flow line you know, shot uh, 5002, immediately up here, here's the, uh, you know, back of curb, uh, you know, start of the curve. So flow line, back of curb. Yeah, you know, I move over, you know, flow line, or back of curb, then flow line, and, and kind of zigzagging my way. Again, just kind of reducing some of the effort that we used to have to go through in the field. The last thing I'd like to take a look at, you know, really in, in some of this advanced coding is shot uh, 267 right here. And you can see that there is quite a description that, that's going on to this. And really what I'm shooting is the back of this curb. And this particular curb, it's all one figure, right? We took uh, shots all the way around it. But what's important is at the very beginning uh, of the shot, right? So I'm telling it, you know, BC for back of curb, you know, I'm putting a space, I'm telling it, you know, B to begin drawing this. You know, consequently, this again is, uh, you know, maybe a new format if you haven't checked out Civil 3D in, in uh, a couple of years, right? Historically, with Autodesk Collection, we used to have to put the, the figure code or the, the draw code before the shot, 
right? So in a land desktop world, it would have had to have been B space BC. Well, Civil 3D again allows us, we can put it at the beginning or we can put it at the end. The nice thing about putting it at the end is most data collectors on the market that draw line work on the screen as the surveyors are collecting it, right? They like to have it formatted at the end. So now we can accommodate that. You know, Civil 3D doesn't care. So again, back a curb, the B to start drawing the line. And then we see a whole series of horizontal and vertical offsets. Now, these are absolute offsets based off of the point uh, that I shot, right? They're negative because I'm actually offsetting to the left of the figure uh, in the case of the horizontal, and it's negative in the case of vertical because I'm uh, going down, right? So really what I'm doing is I'm offsetting from this point you know, four tenths down, uh, you know, five hundredths to draw the face of the curb. And then I'm offsetting one more time to draw the bottom of the curb or the flow line of the curb. Now, the nice thing about this is I get to define, you know, this template uh, of the curb geometry, if you will. And the beauty here is I do this one time. Now and forever until I tell it to stop, when I take a BC shot, it's going to just apply these offsets to it. So the next one down, here's point uh, 274, which was the, uh, the next one in line. Notice that I only shot you know, the back of the curb. However, Civil 3D is drawing in the face and the flow line for me. You'll even see if I highlight uh, these particular figures, we do have grips uh, at those points. I never physically shot this. However, Civil 3D is connecting uh, that line work for me as well. Right, This works great if you're doing as-built collection. Maybe the curb was put down with a curb machine. It's very uniform. It doesn't change. You know, it's always going to be that you know, half a foot over, half a foot down you know, type of scenario. And we can really reduce the amount of shots that, that we have to take there. Now, just so that you can see, and I'm going to highlight all of this geometry and throw it into, uh, up into the object viewer so we can take a look at this. Right, and you can see that it's absolutely putting in the 3D geometry. This can be used as brake lines and a surface down the line if that's how if that's how we see fit. Thank you for spending the last few minutes learning about some aspects of the survey tools within Civil 3D. For more information, please visit imagineit.com or call 800-356-9050.